Hey guys, in today's video, I'm going to give you an introduction to Flask SQL Alchemy. So Flask SQL Alchemy is one of the more popular extensions for Flask, and it adds support for SQL Alchemy to your Flask app. And SQL Alchemy is a way to connect your Python code to your database. So basically, there will be a mapping between classes that you create in Python and the objects of those classes with tables in the database in the rows in the database. So in this video, we're going to set up a simple model that represents a table in the database. And then we're going to insert some data into that model and then we'll get data out of that model as well so we can see what's in the database. So before I get started, I just want to let you know that you can join a free course on my site called Flask SQL Alchemy Basics. This course will teach you more about SQL Alchemy than what I'll cover in the video. Uh, it's going to cover more about queries and relationships. So if you're interested in that, just go to uh, prettyprinted.com slash Flask SQL. And I'll have a link in the description below. But I have a bunch of videos here that can help you with Flask SQL Alchemy if you are interested in learning more after this video. So to get started in this video, I have a directory created already for what I'm going to do. And I'm going to install Flask and Flask SQL Alchemy. So once I install these two things, I will write some code. Actually, I'll do that now while they're installing. So I need to import Flask from Flask. And I need to import uh, flask underscore or import from flask underscore SQL alchemy, uh, SQL alchemy, capital S, capital Q, capital L, and then capital A followed by alchemy. So SQL alchemy. So the case has to be correct to use this. And then I'll instantiate a flask app. And then I'll also instantiate the SQL Alchemy object. So by convention, it's just called DB, but you can call it whatever you want. And I'll pass in the app. So if you're using a more complicated pattern, like with uh, an application factory, then you'll use a knit app on DB instead of this. But uh, for our purposes, since we're going to keep everything in one file, uh, I'm going to use this method of instantiating SQL Alchemy. And I need some configuration before I instantiate SQL Alchemy. So I'll put the two here as placeholders. The first is going to be SQL Alchemy track modifications. So the reason why I'm doing this is just so a warning message doesn't appear when I run the app. So this doesn't actually change anything, but it just makes a warning message go away. So the second one is the important one. So SQL Alchemy database URI. So this is the location of the database. So this can be on your local machine or it can be on a remote machine. So to determine the URI, you can go to the Flask SQL Alchemy documentation and go to connection URI format here. And then you see some examples. So you see one for Postgres, you see one for MySQL, you see one for Oracle. So when you're using a remote server, normally you have a username, you have a password, you have the location of the server. So remoteserver.com or something like that. And then you have the name of the database. So in this particular example, actually all three, you have Scott as the username, Tiger as the password, uh, localhost as the server. Uh, in this case, it's 127.0.01, but it's still localhost, has a port on this one. You don't necessarily need a port unless the port is different from the default from the database, but most of the time it's going to be the default for the database. So for example, my SQL, the default port is uh, 3306. Then you have the name of the database. And then you can also use SQLite, which I'll be using in this video. The reason why I like using SQLite in the videos and actually in a lot of my projects is because you don't have compatibility issues when creating the database. So when you work with MySQL or Postgres, you have to have some additional libraries installed and they can be tricky to get working on uh, certain computers. So I know that SQLite is a little easier to get working. So no one should have a problem using SQLite when they watch my videos. Whereas if they try to install uh, MySQL, for example, there are a lot of potential issues that they can run into and I can't cover all of the uh, error cases for SQL or for MySQL because it's just too many. So I'll be using SQLite, which is just a database that is a file on your system. And it's actually pretty powerful. Like it seems like it wouldn't be, but um, you can get a lot of mileage out of using a SQLite database. So the URI here, 
starts with some slashes. So if you use three slashes, that means it's going to be a relative path. And if you use four slashes, it's an absolute path. So I'm going to use a relative path so the database can show up in my project directory. So I only have three slashes and I'll call this db.sqlite3. You can call it whatever you want, but I like calling them db.sqlite3. So once you have those two things, those are the configuration that you need for SQL Alchemy. So the next thing we need to do is we need to create a table that represents or I should say we need to create a class that represents a table in the database. So to do that, you create a class and this class needs to inherit from db.model. So I'll create a class called user and it's a good idea to make sure the name of the class is capitalized and it needs to inherit from db.model. So db.model. So it's taking this db object that I instantiated here and calling dot model on it. So this way, this class will then map to a table eventually. So the table doesn't exist yet, but it will in just a moment. So one column that all these models need is an ID column or a primary key column. It doesn't necessarily need to be ID, but ID is good enough. So to create a column, you have an attribute and then you have it equal to db.column. And inside of db.column, you need to specify a data type for the column. So in this case, I want it to be an integer column. So db.integer, and then I'll set the primary key to be true. And then I need to create my other column. So the ID column isn't really important for my use. It's used by a Flask SQL Alchemy. But for me, I need columns to actually store the data that I'm interested in. So for our example, we'll have one column called name and another column called location. And this column, so db.column, will be a string. And let's say 50 characters long. And then we'll have another column called location, which can also be 50 characters long. And let's add one more. Let's have like a date create a column. So db.column. So this column won't be a string. Instead, it's going to be a date time. So db.datetime. And we can also set a default. And we can say that the default is going to be whatever the time is now. And to do that, we need to import date time. So uh, from date time, import date time. And we just pass the function here. So date time dot now. We don't need to use the parentheses because this function will get executed when a new row is created. So we have those three. And if you want to see some other options for columns, you can look in the documentation here and you see you have integers, strings, text, date, time, float, boolean, pickle type, large binary, and there are actually more. Uh, those are some of the more common ones, but I'd say the most common ones that you will use are the ones that I have here. So integer, string, and date time. So now that I have this class, I want to create a table in my database based off this. So it's basically going to be a table that has four columns, ID, name, location, and date created. And it's going to have all these data types. So to do that, I need to first create the database. But since I'm using Flask SQL Alchemy, I can create the database and the table in the database at the same time. So I'm using a SQLite database. So once I do this, we'll see a new file pop up here on the left hand side. So to create the database and the table in the database, you start up a Python REPL and then you import the db object from your app. So from app import db and module not found flask. That is because I need to start my virtual environment. So let me just start that really quick. Okay, so Python again. So from app import db and it works. So to create the table in the database, I'm going to use db.create underscore all. And once I run this, it will create the new file here on the left hand side. And also inside of that database file, we'll see that it has a table called user. So I create it, we see db.sqlite3 appear on the left hand side there. So now if I open it up using the SQLite command line, I can look at the tables and I see user there. Okay, so I know I have the database, so let's actually add some information into the database. So I'll create a route, and this route will have some values that I could take in, so a name and a location. And then I'll call this index, and it takes a name location. 
And what I'm going to do is first create a new row using this information. So to create a new row in the table, you need to instantiate an object based on the class that maps to that table. So I'm going to create a user object from the user table. And you instantiate this uh, user object using the data that you want to have. So I don't need an ID because the ID is generated automatically and I don't need the date created because the date created has a default on it. So I just need the name and the location. So to do this, name is going to be equal to name and location equals location. So on the left hand side is the name of the column and on the right hand side is the actual data. So if I wanted to, I can have like my name here directly, but instead I'm using the variable here that comes from the URL. So once you create the user object, you can then add it to the session. So db.session.add user, and this prepares it to be inserted into the database. And then db session commit will actually save that insert into the database. So those are the only three things I need to do to add some data to the database. And then what I can do is I can say uh, added new user. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this app. And if I go to my app and type in Anthony and California and hit enter, it says new user added. So let's try doing that a couple of times. Stacy, London, and Zach it's in Sydney. Okay, so I've done this three times. How can we verify that the data is actually in the database? So if I close this out and use SQLite to open up the database again, I can write a query to look at my table and I see the three columns. So not only do I see the names and locations that I added, but I see the primary key. So I see one, two, and three, which are generated by the database. And I also see the time that each user was created and it was done automatically for me. I didn't have to pass in the time directly. So now let's try to get that data back using a name. So we'll create another route and this one will take in one value name. And if we pass in a name, what we want to do is we want to query the database, look for that particular name and return some information about that user. So to query the database using Flask SQL Alchemy, the most straightforward way is to use the class. So user followed by dot query followed by a filter. So if you use filter by, then you're looking for something directly. So I want to look for the name and I can pass a name here. So this is similar to how we created the row in the first place. The left-hand side is the name of the column and the right-hand side is the actual value we're looking for. So once again, I can just put in Anthony directly, but instead I'm going to pass in the variable because it's going to be taken from the URL. And then dot first will give me the first result. Since I'm only expecting one, first works. If you're expecting more results, you can use all, and I'll talk about that more in the course, but first gives you the very first row. And then we can just set this to be something like user. So once we have the user, then we can display something back to the user actually using the app. So I can say return, uh, the user is located in, and then using an F string, I can say user dot location. So once again, this dot location represents the column in the database. So it's going to take the user that it finds from the query and get their actual location. So if it looks for Anthony and it returns Anthony here as a user, then user dot location will be California. So now that I have that, let's go ahead and take a look. So if I go slash Anthony, I see the user is located in California. Let me make this a little bigger so it's easier to see. Just needs to restart the server. Okay, so the user is located in California. If I do the same thing with Zach, and I didn't spell Zach right, Sydney, and then Stacy, London. So we see it's very easy to put data into the database and retrieve data from the database. So obviously there's a lot more you can do with Flask SQL Alchemy, and that's why you should check out the course to learn a little bit more, because I have many more videos on it, but even then, there's a ton that you can do. It's a really powerful library because when it comes to working with the database, it's usually the most important part of your app. So you have a ton of potential things that you can do. So 
that's it for this video. Like I said, if you want to join that course, just go to prettyprintit.com slash flask SQL. And if you have any questions about this video, feel free to leave a comment down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time.